tail of the tape. Both men are six foot one, coming in pretty much at super middleweight, over the weight of middleweight at 162 and a half and 163 and a half. Slight reach advantage for Hugo Centeno Jr. Main event here on FS1. Let's go back to the ring and Jimmy Lennon Jr. And ladies and gentlemen, we welcome you to the Toyota Arena here in Ontario, California, as Premier Boxing Champions presents the FS1 PBC Fight Night featured bout of the evening, brought to you by MGM Resorts and Brooklyn Boxing in association with Samson Boxing. Judging at ringside, Tim Cheatham, Dr. Lou Moret, and David Sutherland. All right, fans, here we go. 10 rounds of boxing scheduled middleweights in the ring. Introducing first, on my left, he is fighting out of the red corner, wearing white trunks and hailing from Los Mochis, Sinaloa, Mexico. He weighed in at 162 and one half pounds with a hard hitting record of 21 wins, four losses and one draw, with all 21 of his wins coming by way of knockout. Tonight, making his US debut, here is the hard hitting battler from the well-known boxing family, introducing Juan, Juanito Montiel. And his opponent across the ring on my right, fighting out of the blue corner in this 10 round attraction. He is wearing blue trunks, red and silver trim, hailing from and proudly representing Oxnard, California. He weighed in at 163 and one half pounds. His fine record stands at 27 wins, three losses, with 14 wins coming by way of knockout. Introducing the boss, Hugo Centeno Jr. And referee in charge now to give instructions, Thomas Taylor. Right here, gentlemen. Okay, belt line is good here, belt line is good. Gentlemen, I gave you rules in the back. Protect yourselves at all times, listen to my commands. Touch them up. Back to the corner. No, 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 no. Tonight's keys to victory are sponsored by KFC's $20 fill-ups. Order ahead and get it delivered at KFC.com. Well, I, I think uh, Centeno probably won't do this, but I think he should pressure in the first round and, and go to the body and head and look for a quick knockout. I saw some flaws in Montiel when I watched the tape. And Montiel, he needs to be a, he needs to act like a knockout puncher and go in there and go in there and do uh, uh, orthodox and southpaw because he's good at both. Scheduled for ten. You ready? You ready? Hugo Centeno Jr., 27 and three, third fight of 2019, comes off a decision loss to Willie Monroe in June in that fight I mentioned earlier. Fought with a broken nose, that is difficult. Juan Macias Montiel in the white trunks, Centeno in the blue and red. Centeno has fought the highest level of competition, started his career at 24 and 0. 3-3 three and three since then, that was in 2016. But again, he has lost to the likes of Jamal Charlo, Jamal's twin brother, and also Maciek Seletsky, who's one of the top middleweights in the world. Well, probing jab there, nice snap jab to the head by Centeno. Well, so far Montiel hasn't done what he said he was going to do uh, in the first round in our fighter meetings. He said he was going to come out and press and press hard. And Centeno was the one who actually started walking forward in the first round here. I thought he passed up a few opportunities to throw some punches while Montiel was backing up, to tell you the truth. But let's see how this uh, unfolds here. See, right there, he could have punched off that turn. I'm surprised he didn't. Centeno, pretty good with the footwork and then pressing the jab. But goes to the body right away. He's going to the body very well with that jab. I think he's passed up a few opportunities, Centeno, not to throw a right hand. He threw a nice jab to the body. Throw that right hand to the head after that and just see what happens. You is that know. movement giving him trouble, though? I mean, is that what's well, doing the no, job? No, no, because Montiel was kind of stationary right in front of him for the first 30 seconds of this fight. I, I just thought he should have thrown a hard punch, you know? Well, he did say that, he, you know, like he's going he's gonna to be a little cautious in there, especially in the first round because he knows he's up against a knockout puncher. So, you know, the guy's got a lot of wins and not a lot of knockouts. So, yeah, he's aware of his strength and his power. Yeah, Montiel, 21 wins, all 21 coming by KO. He's got four losses and a draw, but that's impressive. He does, and he got knocked out by Jaime Munguia, did Montiel. And how did that happen? Munguia went right at him and started throwing some really hard shots and backed him up like that. See, he backs up with his hands down, Montiel. 
And, and I just think that, you know, sometimes you can catch a guy cold in that first round when he's giving you the opportunity to do it. You know, I call it the, the element of surprise. Why not at least go out there and try to throw uh, a good car, a uh, good, uh, good couple of shots that shot. are really hard, you know? Good, that was a hard body uh -huh. shot there by Montiel. Came in and that doubled over Centeno just briefly. He's back throwing and throws the lead right hand and lands. And you see Montiel is able to go southpaw off the orthodox stance, moves back to orthodox right now. Good stiff jab by Centeno, who's had a very good first round. At least the more active man, you can see the punches landed by CompuBox in favor of Centeno Jr. Right, stop. No End of the first there. round, scheduled for 10. Good boxing so far here in the opening round. Come on, Andre. Yeah? Okay. Deep breath. Yeah. Oh. Okay. You see, all right? How you feeling? Deep breath, nice and calm, all right? Look, we thought if you stay behind your jab, this guy will never hit you. All he's trying to do is throw that left hook to the body. You see it, right? Just stay calm, keep your hands tight. When he gets close, throw that one, two that Tony's telling you, just bring your hands back up. Tony Harrison comes in, still playing his championship belt. <laughs> he's working it. Tony Harrison, Jamel Charlo over on Fox. This is as he is entering Lennox Lewis. <laughs> and he's got a good tune going in his head. Oh, yeah, he's got something going on in his head. You know. <laughs> this time he's got the belt turned around the correct way. Oh, did he not have that the right way? No. Well, he's learning. Well, a lot of people thought, too, that, you know, he didn't have a chance to really celebrate his championship because there was so much controversial, you know, uh, talk about, you know, how he won the fight. And Charlo should have won the fight. And he, he thought, you know, he should have been celebrated a little more. <laughs> Well, he's going to reverse, be able to reverse course on all of that tonight if he comes out and wins this fight. All right, there won't be any dispute. Well, there could be lots of dispute. Well, I think this one is going to be clear cut. This one way will or the be the other. It. I really do. Okay. Should be fascinating tonight again. It was a good tactical boxing match. Tony Harrison a year ago to the weekend, beating Jamel Charlo. Charlo, you would figure after his first pro loss, would come in with an extra level of motivation, although he's prepared for every fight. Round two here, though. Now yeah, look, yeah. Centeno's coming out as a left-hander in the second round here, giving uh, Montiel a little taste of his own medicine by switching up. And he, and he came out a little bit more aggressive this round. So who, who knows what he was told in the corner. Good left uppercut by, by Centeno. Centeno then pressing forward, flashing out. Now, he, he was having success, though, in that first round. I, and I'm not scoring this fight, but it seems like he won the first round. Why would you switch it up, Joe? Well, he did land a couple of, you know, hard punches here from the southpaw position. But what normally happens is if you're a right-hander and not a natural left-hander, sometimes your defense will suffer. So you got to be careful. You may be able to throw hard shots, but they're going to come back at you, and your defense usually suffers when you switch into a position that you're not normally natural. Yeah, I agree. With, I agree with that. You know, I, I'm always the person to say, if you're good at the left hand, stay at the left. If you're good at the right, stay at the no. right. You've never moved southpaw, have you, Lennox? You never did that. Only for, to throw one punch and then I'm, I switch right back. Okay. Yes, I did. You landed. Oh, yeah. All right, excellent. I, I threw a right hand. Well, nice right jab. Yep. <laughs> but then you it was go actually back. a right hook. Oh, was it? Okay. You know, last night we had the flyweight championship and saw a kid, Julio Cesar Martinez. I've never seen anybody move righty to lefty as fluid and as devastating as that kid last night. He's now the 112 pound champion. So it, it, it could be a whole new mode of boxing with guys shifting fluidly back and forth. Those guys at that weight are really athletically uh, gifted. Yep. You know, at that weight, they're amazing, they're fast, they're fluid, they're athletic. So I can, I can believe it, I'll look the kid up. A little tougher to do at 160 pounds, but again, you see Centeno able to go round to round, and now he switches back to orthodox and lands a right hand to the body. He did, and he got countered with a little chopping right hand, right hook from uh, Montiel at, at the same time. Lennox, how difficult is it after uh, Centeno, again, he's faced very top guys. He's lost. He has a loss of decision. Ooh. Ooh, a hard hook. Oh, and and Centeno is hurt. Centeno is hurt. Rocked by the Montiel hook. He holds on for dear life. Smiling now says he's doing all right, but he's on his bike moving away. Yeah, he's got to be careful. He's got to put his hands up because 
moving around with his hands down is still in a bit of danger, so he's got to keep his hands up before he does all this. Final seconds, still in the danger zone. Obviously, as we told you, Montiel can punch. We're going to go to the corner here. Lennox, I'll finish the question at a certain point. Yeah. I was I was going to ask about Centeno staying motivated in this new phase of his career, but let's go to the corner and listen in. You all right? Shake it up a little Okay. Stay too close to the stay okay. close to Look, don't get careless. How you stay disciplined outside, right. you gotta stay disciplined in the ring. Use your jab. Don't get careless. Don't give this fight up off a boss. All right, here jab. we go. Here's, here's from the southpaw position. A nice hook this from round, he's gonna Centeno. Come at you, right? The first part of the round, let's move. He's gonna waste a little bit. Now, and we're we'll gonna start popping that jab. Just bring your hands see, back. Right? Got that left hook off, but yeah, Centeno's hands were down that. at his waist. What do you expect is gonna happen yeah, when you're a foot away from a guy? Okay? So he, he almost got dropped and stopped. He's got to be very careful. You can't make those type of mistakes. Against a guy with obviously heavy hands. We mentioned, right. look, he's 20, Montiel's 25, 21 and 4 and 1, but 21 wins by knockout, all 21. Centeno has to come back out. And Lennox, I'll ask the question again. You know you can lose your energy, you can lose your focus, especially you get used to winning all the way on the way up. You get a couple of losses. How do you keep your fighting spirit, stay as motivated and as sharp as you used to be after absorbing a few losses? Well, the, the, the idea is to, to become a winner again and making sure that you don't don't lose. And whatever you need to adjust in training or in, uh, in, in, your, in your life, you, you better do that. And I think he has, he's done that, you know. Nobody wants to be, uh, to lose. So he's always going in with the aspect of, yeah, let me win. And, uh, you know, this is a good opponent for me to show my talent. And he is back throwing meaningful punches here in round three. I thought he had an outstanding first round and actually looked good when he moved southpaw in the second round, but then hands at his sides and he got caught. Reminiscent, Lennox, it has happened to you too. Oh yeah. Oh, yep. yeah. That was Hassim yeah. Rahman first fight. I remember putting up my hands and I thought I had it blocked and uh, he came around the hand and hit me with an unbelievable punch, which my chin happened to be in the way of. Did you just think you were safe, or were you? Did you just think you were so good you were invulnerable at that point? No, I thought I was actually safe. You know, uh, I didn't realize that uh, he uh, threw that type of punch, and uh, it, it shocked me. It surprised me. Well, that was uh, again for those who don't quite recall that hot heavyweight championship. Lennox at his peak, where uh, again you you moved back smiling as if like this guy can't touch me, he can't hurt me, but. Hasim Rahman could. You right. avenged it, of course. Oh, yeah. Came back. Got that back. Good right hand by Centeno. But that's what Centeno just absorbed, and he takes a good hard body shot. Montiel can hit. Well, Montiel is now doing uh, uh, exactly what he said he was going to do, and that's put pressure on and put put Centeno on the run, like you said in your, your earlier notes, uh, Lennox. So uh, this is turning out to be very competitive. I, I, I just think that right now, Centeno could probably let his hands go a little bit more, like right there, off that jab, hit the ball. There you go, something like that. Yeah, Montiel out of Los Mochis, Mexico, says he's been sparring with world-class fighters since he was a teenager, so he is used to a high level of competition. So you see, even when it seems like he's losing partway through a round, he will land some heavy leather and change things. Good hard jab I like by Montano. Mont yeah, Monte Montano, uh, he comes in and he's, he's southpaw one second and he switches to orthodox. This is after he's thrown a combination, which is the perfect time to do that. Changing his timing and his tactics as well. He throws a nice lead right hand, and that lands on the nose of Montiel. Now he goes back to southpaw and jabs with the right hand. Now I will tell you that um, Centeno's best punch is probably his left hook. And I've yet, I, he, like that, right there, that's his left hand. It was from the southpaw position, but his left hook is very strong. Final seconds here in round number three. This has been interesting. It is gentlemen. definitely Listen spirited. We are back here in California in a moment. Right, right Hands up, stay composed. Interesting fight here. Hugo Centeno Jr. and Juan Macias Montiel. Brian Kenny with Lennox Lewis, Joe Goosen ringside. Heidi Andral, Marcos Villegas here with us as well. Again, all leading up to the WBC title at junior middleweight, super welterweight, whatever you want to call it. Tony Harrison, Jamel Charlo. It should be spirited tonight.
And Centeno is coming out with a great jab, and uh, that's what he needs to do, throw that jab. And he's got to keep his defense a little bit tight. Sometimes he drops his hands and uh, moves away from his defense like he's not supposed to do that, so he's got to be careful. And he, and he should stay off those ropes as well because, you know, uh, Montiel is a, is a good pressure fighter, and he'd love to have you stop and pin on the ropes to be able to score his heavy blows. So let's see if Centeno can stay off those ropes. And Montiel doesn't throw a lot of straight punches. They're looping punches. And those those you can't see sometimes, especially when you're used to boxing against a guy, against uh, with a guy that throws straight punches. So those looping punches sometimes get away from you. Good jab to the body again by Centeno. Now again. Oh, I'm sorry, Bright, but uh, I was just going to say Centeno has a big knock. I'll see that left hook he just threw there. It was a nice counter left hook. He hit uh, um, the, the guy that fought uh, Aleem, uh, uh, Emmanuel Aleem, who fought Matt Korobov to a draw on the Jared Hurd card. And, of course, um, Korobov had that great fight with Jamal Charlo. Uh, it was a very competitive fight. But Centeno was able to knock out uh, Emmanuel Aleem in the third round with this dynamite left hook. So, you know, I've yet to see him land that yet, but that is his strong suit, is that left hook. Whacking right hand there by Centeno. It brings up something I was going to ask you, Lennox. Do you think Jermel Charlo is better off not having his brother on this card? Because, they, again, when he lost that fight last year, he had his brother waiting in the wings, and there just seemed to be a lot of angst between the two, and they both had a rough night. No, I, you know, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. The, the guy that he needs to worry about is the guy that he's facing, and that's Harrison. And, All right. Uh, Joe, you agree with that? No, because I'll tell you why. I have two brothers that uh, fought uh, 60 fights, uh, you know, and most of them on the same card, and it was really difficult for them and me, to tell you the truth. I, I would never want to do that again. Well, it was, uh, it was Gabriel and Rafael Relis. What I was going to say is, look, in one fight uh, that Gabriel had, he injured somebody uh, very badly in a fight, and then Rafael had to come out and fight De La Hoya. It was a, it was a big emotional thing. It, it really was something I wish I could have avoided at one time. So, I, I, I've been through it. Yeah, so but you, I, you, I were, you like were coaching it. both brothers at the time. I was. Yeah, yeah. this is a situation where they're coached by different trainers. Yeah, but the, yep. but the, the fact of the matter is, both of the fighters are in the arena. Both of them are fighting. It's, it's an emotional thing. I'd rather, yeah. rather have one sitting on the outside. And they're twins. Yeah. Like, I mean, there's a real relationship there. They can feel each other. Gabriel and Rafael Relis were both 17 at the same time for a month or two every year. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I'm trying to do that math right Light now. Twins. By the way, uh, on Twitter right now, you can let us know your favorite PBC fight of 2019. And you can vote for Julian Williams with his upset of Jared Hurd. He has two belts at 154 pounds now. We talked about Manny Pacquiao with his upset over Keith Thurman at the age of 40. Errol Spence and Sean Porter, welterweight title. That's at 34 percent. Wow, just over Pacquiao and Thurman. Or Deontay Wilder's one-punch KO of Luis Ortiz in November. That at 16 percent, bringing up the rear. All right, so good voting. Let us know what you think. At PBC on Fox. We'll let you know the results later in the broadcast. That's Andre Durrell backstage with the champ, Tony Harrison. Tony looks relaxed. Gonna have to channel his energy tonight after waiting a full year, again, an ankle injury, postponing that bout in June. Charlo wasn't buying, said Harrison was just bagging out, but they will both get it on tonight for the world title. And back here on FS1, once again, Hugo Centeno Jr., Juan Macias Montiel, round five scheduled for 10. Remember, when we had that Deontay Wilder fight, his younger brother got knocked out in the undercard. Well, I don't right. know it led to anything, but it could be upsetting. And then Deontay came out and knocked out his opponent. After losing several rounds. Well, I don't look at it like that. I look at it like, <laughs> you know, it's a 12-round yeah. fight. You could True. lose a couple rounds and then knock a guy out. You could lose True. every round and knock a guy out. True. It doesn't really matter if you've been winning the first couple rounds. As long as you knock the guy out. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I can only speak for myself. It was, it, and again, um, both the Charlo brothers were at one time trained by one trainer, okay? Yeah. And that was uh, uh, Ronnie Shields. Listen. So, uh, and it became such an issue that they had to separate them. So, I, yeah. I, look, I, I did it the whole way through for, for the career of both kids. And let me tell you something, it was really a tough job. Because That's because you were the same trainer. Well, so, but, but emotions I'm from you losing one, one guy, Bring, carries over to the other brother. 
I would, say there's, I would say it's not necessary. It doesn't have to be Lennox, but there's a possibility of angst, and you're, you're split with your concentration, knowing your brother is also fighting and things like that. Oh, Thank you, Brian. Absolutely. Absolutely. Absolutely, bro. But if it was me, if it was me and my brother uh, lost, I would be going in there trying to knock out the guy. Right. I'd be upset about it. The guy that beat your brother or the guy that you're fighting? <laughs> Marcos Viegas is with us. Marcos, how are you scoring this so far? It's a competitive fight. What do you think? Yeah, it definitely is competitive. I have it 39-37. Now, the, the last few rounds have been really competitive. Uh, they've been really, really tight. But I think overall, at this point, Centeno is throwing a lot more and landing a lot more. The only thing that has me wondering is the score could be flipped to Montiel if the judges are preferring the bigger damaging punches that Montiel's landed in the earlier rounds. No, very good point, Marcos. Thank you. And that, you're right, there are hard thudding shots coming back the other way for Montiel. The regular work, and it's been excellent work so far being done by Centeno. And you see the punches landed there. It's not a wide discrepancy, 52 to 39, but it is in favor of Hugo Centeno Jr. And Centeno's doing a good job of moving and kind of picking and poking right now. He's snuck in a nice little right-hand lead, a few left hands. Uh, but but again, it's not you know Montiel is oh nice right uppercut by Centeno, but Montiel is, is touching him back So he's every time he gets hit he's trying to even it back up by getting back like there There's a nice power right shot there. Yeah the hook to the body by Montiel after throwing and trading uppercuts Both men want to land that uppercut another good hook to the body. That one hurt him. Let that's me tell you, you know, dropped his hands. That's debilitating You heard him grunt. He was right here uh, above us. He really he really felt that punch. And Santeno should go back to his job like his corner was saying. His corner wants him to hit, move with the job a little bit more. Final seconds here, but we will keep it here. And tonight's quarter cam is sponsored by Liberty Mutual Insurance. Only pay for what you need. You're making it hard. All you got to do is fucking jab. Look, baby. You, if, if you're inside, you feel one, you got to slip the next. We're not here to make this a broad game in the fucking fight, all right? Deep breath. Deep breath. <laughs> How you feeling? You all right? All right. Don't just say you're feeling good. This is the point. You got to fuck them up. You have the power to do it. Dig deep. You got to use that jab. Stay disciplined. We're in the six now, right, Dad? We're in the six. So stay behind your jab and bring it back. All right? That six-inch right hand, you jab. That short right hand, all right? And you see this wicked uppercut by Centeno. And you can see the eyes, the reaction from it. By the way, in that corner, that was Eddie Centeno. That is Hugo's younger brother. Hugo Sr. is on the outside of the ropes. Interesting dynamic there, Joe Goosen, isn't it? Because the dad is the chief second, but he's on the outside. The younger brother's in front of his face. Yeah, the, the one who looks like he's 16, but he's 25. And I thought they were great instructions. He, he you know, he told him be smart, use the jab, and, uh, you know, keep boxing nicely. And, and he's... he's I think he's listening to him. And there you see the uh, punch stats here. Power punches landed Montiel with the advantage there in the fifth. And those are just the power punches. I would figure that Centeno Jr. has the lead jab. Fighting a lot more off that left jab. And that's good that he lis listens to his brother because he's, he went out there straight away and popped off three jabs straight and a hook. Looked good. Again, there's a, there's a lot to that. We're talking about brothers, fathers in, in the ring. And, uh, these guys will often say, like, I don't have to finish my sentences. He already knows what I mean. And uh, Hugo has said that, saying, like, I, I just listen to my brother. And we know it'll be a look. It'll be a nudge. It'll be a wink, something. I'll know exactly what he means. Oh, yeah. They've, they've lived together for so long. They know each other inside and out. Round six scheduled for 10. Again, interesting middleweight fight here. Hugo Centeno Jr. and Juan Montiel trying to get back into contender status. Beautiful jab there by Centeno. Two lead right hands. There's a lot of variety, Joe, from Centeno. Well, Centeno's being very athletic right now. You know, uh, Montiel is kind of rudimentary. He comes in and he puts his hands up. He does a little slip job, and then he, he wants to touch you. But, you know, uh, Centeno is being real cute, like that double right hand that he threw right there and then got under the counter. Um, you know, he's trying to make angles turn on, on Montiel because Montiel is putting a lot of pressure on him. Touching his body. It is important to stay unpredictable and have some variety to your game. And Centeno was able to do that as he now goes back to Southpaw. Sleep right hand by Montiel Lance. See, Montiel is switching from, like we were talking about, Lennox, switching from right hand to the left hand. He's eating he's some shots. It difficult. Yeah, no, but he's eating some shots here. He got his head moved around there. Uppercuts, goes back to conventional. 
Yeah, that was a nice another, yeah, whacking right hand. You know what? It's the, now I'll go back to Marcos after this to see how do you score this round. Just when you think Centeno has it in the bag. Well, and just to let you know, though, on that hook, Centeno did write it out. You know, he turned his head when the punch came. So you think judges all punch. put the, you know, the other yeah. wherewithal or the angle? Listen, There's a good hook that lands. Listen, you got Lou Moret sitting across the ring here. He's been looking at fights for about 50 right. years now. So, yeah. If but he has the angle, time. Joe, what if you don't have the angle? You see, gets, you see a guy's head rocked. I'm well, no. The, we saw it from here. He saw it from there. You know, it doesn't matter where you are. You can see when a guy turns his head. Well, if you're paying attention. <laughs> <laughs> Lennox, I deserve that. I, I cheap shot at Joe earlier. I, I, I wanted to apologize, Joe. No, no, you just no apologizing in boxing. <laughs> this, this is where Centeno has to be careful, being against the ropes. He's got to right. come off the ropes, and he's got to throw that jab. Let's keep that jab going because it's keeping Montiel off balance. And every time he does that, he has to readjust. Good power shots by Montiel through this round. But the jabbing is coming from Hugo Centeno Jr., who's doing a marvelous a job there. Great job right there. Just move, deep breath. All right? Sure? Yeah. All right. Look. Don't stay right there. This round, let's just move, all right? This round, let's get some air, all right? Keep your hands up. Keep your hands up, right? We're going into seven, right? Seven? Okay, hands up, stay tight. You got four rounds left. Just box this kid, you're winning, all right? Just keep your hands tight, fool. All right? Bring that left back up. Jab here and there. Let's take this round up and get some air, all right? Okay? I can feel it. Don't stay there with him. Whatever you do, don't stay there. Put that in your head. Don't stay there with him, all right? This guy can't hurt you. Your job is too much. You just gotta rely on that speed. You gotta stay disciplined, all right? We're almost there, baby. Put your hands up and just, just run up and get some air. Deep breaths, all right? You gotta be first. Está cansando. Scrap here. Hugo Centeno Jr. right there against Juan Macias Montiel in the white trunks. Round seven. And again, an interesting fight going back and forth. You see the punches landed there in the sixth round to Centeno Jr., but some heavy leather was landed by Montiel as well. And Montiel, he's looking like he's coming in there trying to knock him out. He's looking for that power, power punch, and he's looking for that opportunity. Yeah, he's really starting to put on hard pressure now. He's just walking, you know, Centeno down, and Centeno's just got to be able to catch him coming in. See, well, well Montiel's coming in. You got to use that jab up and down, throw some punches downstairs, upstairs, make your turn, stay off the ropes. And Centeno should hold his ground a little bit more and, he and just throw a left, you know, left, right, or a right, left, whatever style he wants to put, you know? No, you're, you're right. He, he, he could and he's capable of it. Montiel doing the stalking, but see, Centeno he's doing the jabbing, but he's on his bike now. He is. And, and, and see, the thing is, Montiel probably has very heavy hands, and, and uh, Centeno probably feels those little short shots on the inside. He goes, well, let's see if I can get it done from the outside instead of getting clipped a little bit. You know? Centeno is moving and moving and trying to keep him at bay, Ooh. but a good right hand, Didn't and he really ducks under. Anything. Didn't really do much to uh, Montiel when it hit him, though, I'll tell you. Yeah, he's got to do something to kind of slow down Montiel a little bit. Yeah, he's marching running to a point, yeah. right? By the way, I, I just got to mention this real quick. You haven't noticed the referee in this fight tonight, have you? It's an excellent point, yeah. You know, Tom that, Taylor is barely there. It, right. And that's the sign of a great referee. Yep. He's letting these guys fight. He'll, he'll, he'll insert himself when needed, but that's a great referee. Yep. It's a good point. And you bring up Dr. Lou Moret, who, who's been judging fights since... 70s? Well, 80s? Refereeing fights back in the old yeah. days of the Olympic in the 70s oh. when I used to go there, so. But yeah. I've always wondered about that, Joe, in all seriousness. Yeah. When I see a guy and say, oh, he's a veteran guy, he rides out that shot, he went with it. Right. Yeah, how, you're expecting a judge to know that, or you're expecting a judge to see your head snap back and give you credit for a scoring blow? You know what I'm saying? I, I just don't know if that pays off in terms of judging. Well, well, the thing is, is that if I'm scoring, if I'm a judge and I'm scoring, I'm not going to really give a guy uh, a credit landing on a, a big left hook if, it's, if somebody rides it out. That's all. If, if you if you can tell he's riding yeah. it out. Well, yeah. Well, that's with you being paid the big bucks for as a judge. You know? <laughs> yeah, well, well uh, I'm going to ask you again about the judging after the main event tonight, okay? Right, see, right. see if you're all good with all the judges and how they judge things. <laughs> Centeno, Centeno, every time you get you hit him, he just shakes his head. I love guys that do that. That means I'm not hitting them hard enough. <laughs> right. <laughs> 
So they're they're actually telling you, look, you should be punching a little bit harder. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> no, that didn't hurt. Okay, I, I'll try it again. No, that didn't hurt. It will hurt eventually. Montiel is stalking he throughout is, this but, round. He is, but I I, I think he's uh, uh, Centeno's going to get the credit for this round. He's landing the scoring shots. He had that right hand earlier. Maybe didn't do a lot of damage, but that's a scoring shot, and they add up. Hugo Centeno Jr. getting the instructions from his brother. Coming out now for this and round, round number eight against Juan Montiel in the white trunks. And that was good instructions in the corner by his brother. I told him the exact right thing to do. Maybe, you know, obviously throw a little bit more combinations to stop uh, Montiel. Well, by the way, Marcos Villegas given that seventh round to Montiel. I was saying, you know, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a tough one to score. Marcos, give us some insight into that round and how you scored it. Yeah, you know, I have it here as a round that it could have gone both ways. I just felt overall that Montiel landed the more damaging uh, punches, the punches that were uh, landing cleanly. And, and to me, from my position and my vantage point, uh, rocking the head back of Hugo Centeno. So that's why I gave him that last round. Uh, it points out too, Marcos, thank you, that this is not some exact science. There are different ways of viewing this. And you could have a number of rounds that you deem close. And at the end of the fight, they're all turned in round by round. And just as it was with Harrison and Charlo, uh, early rounds being won quietly by Harrison or slightly, they add up as much as the big rounds, like round 12 in that fight, which was won definitively by Charlo. Centeno came out with a good left hand, straight left, and it caught Montel straight up flush on the face. Good shot. You should have followed up with that with a couple more punches. Yeah, right now Centeno's being a little bit sneakier than Montiel, and I think he, he's listening to his corner with the exception of sitting here on the ropes. But, um, you know, he, he made some nice turns on him already. Um, he was told when you do make that pivot coming around. Oh, he opened up his eye right punches. there. Yeah. I'm sorry, Joe, but that no, right hand right. just opened him up right over the eye. That was a crisp counter right hand, and now there is blood flowing over the eye of Montiel. Now, Montiel might be cut, but that doesn't mean that uh, 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 Centeno should go crazy now. Lead right hand okay. again by, Mo by Centeno, and he now, just after he was sitting on the ropes and taking some shots, he landed that right hand and lands another one straight up the middle. And this is what I'm saying. When a guy's coming forward, you just have to step back and throw that good power punch. He'll run right into oh. it like he did. Another beautiful right hand, and another this time in the form of a right jab. Now, now he sees blood, and when you see blood, it kind of eggs you on a little bit better, so, you know, he feels good about himself. Well, he sees the work being done, and that, that definitely opened things up as Montiel paws at that blood that's bothering him, and, and it's just got to. Oh, well, without a doubt, but, but again, uh, uh, Centeno is just being really smart. He's, he's, he's really pot-shotting Montiel right now while he's walking in, whether it be a lead right hand from a southpaw or right-handed stance. He's really landing at will when he wants to. It's not a lot, but it's the one, two shots here and there, but they're definitely doing damage. Centeno still on his bike, backpedaling, the damage done. Montiel still plodding in, still stalking and still trying to turn this fight around with one heavy-handed shot. Final seconds, Montiel will have some work to do. Back here ringside, and we're gonna see that right hand, Lennox and Joe. Where you see Montiel leans to his left, right there, and the right hand, the straight right hand was able to land on the right eyebrow of Montiel because of his slip. Watch, he slips one way, right there, see, and it actually makes him run into that right hand. He thought he was gonna dodge it, but it actually clipped the, the, the end of the eyebrow. Once you see that blood flowing, like Lennox says, it's, yeah, it's a mean, real incentive. Of course, he felt good about himself. He said he's got him, he's got him. And real work in the corner. Manuel Montiel is the cut man for Juan Montiel. As you see the punch stats right now, Centeno Jr. with the advantage and landed shots, not by a wide margin, 94 to 85. Again, you're trying to count up all the punches. That's that's not by an awful lot. And a lot of the power shots are coming from Montiel, even with the good jab work being done by Centeno. That right hand landed from Montiel. Montiel trying to pepper in that jab. Well, Montiel, right now, it's, he, he, it's a little bit of a desperate situation right now, because if it is a close fight, um, I'm sure he was egged on by his corner to go ahead and, and really put the attack on and try to knock out Centeno because they probably feel they're a little bit behind right now. Yeah, and I, I, I think he's been trying to do that, but Joe, it seems like he's slowing down a bit. The energy is ebbing a bit here round by round. 
Oh, that was just a slip. There was water in the corner, and that happens every so often. Santana with the slip. Tom Taylor gets them right back at it. Let's watch this again just to see where he stands in. As Joe mentioned, there yeah, is a lot of water. Yeah, see the right. dark, wet spot there. Yeah. Good uppercut there by Montiel. Centeno is not out of the woods, even with the success that he's had. Montiel throws hard and throws power shots. Right hand straight up the middle by Centeno. Good left hook. Good action fight. Good combination by Centeno. And Centeno can actually throw a little bit more combinations. He's, you know, he's got a guy coming at him right in front of his face. He knows he's going to be in front of his face. So all he has to do is, you know, take that side step and throw that left hook, right hook, whatever he wants to throw. Uh, Montiel will be there for the punches, as you can see. Uh, it's that uppercut that he throws so well, and he's open to that as well. So he can mix up all kinds of different punches to uh, to hit Montiel. Let's get back to Marcos Viegas, who's scoring this for Marcos. I don't want to uh, ruin your concentration here. <laughs> How do you try to make sense of this as you go round by round? This round right here is, is a good round so far for Hugo Centeno Jr. I, I think he he's uh, ahead in this round, but the, there's been a lot of rounds that have been swing rounds that I have noted here, uh, and it comes down to who's being effective. Is Hugo being effective when he's moving, or are the judges looking at a Montiel coming in and landing these big punches that are having a big effect on Centeno Jr.? Marcos, thank you. And you can see right there, there's another another body shot. Centeno land. Those are scoring blows. Two more. So those are scoring shots that are coming in. And as a judge, you've got to try to weigh, all right, how much damage was done? Another body shot lands by Centeno. Yeah, I, I have a feeling that it's probably leaning towards uh, Centeno the scoring right now because he's he's really doing what he wants to do. He wants to move. He wants to box. And he's pot shotting from the outside. He's been busy. Are you right, Joe? It's been effective as well. Montiel's still in it. Centeno seems to be doing the job necessary. It's about time he showed up, man. What the hell? We need this round. We need this round. the time clock for you? Let's go see how we can get it done. You have the power. You have the power. There in the corner, Pedro Montiel yeah. with one Macias Montiel. Montiel, as we've been mentioning throughout the fight, seems to be down, you would think, is down on the cards. We do not know. Hugo Centeno Jr. outlanding. He's been able to pick his shots, but it's been a very competitive fight. Uh, you could tell by the conversation in the corner of Montiel that their, their uh, corner men are desperate. They feel he's behind. You need this round. He may need more than one round, but they definitely think he needs this round. And you, they kept saying, you've got the power. In other words, we'd like a knockout if you could possibly yeah. pull it off. So they think he's behind, and uh, he just might be. But he, it, it, I don't think by a long shot. Right, I agree with you, Joe. We, we figure that Marcos Villegas has it the same way, who's our unofficial judge here. But you see, look, again, punches landed. It, that's not by a wide margin, 115 to 104. If a guy is landing shots, and I'm not saying he's just throwing jabs and he's feather dusting him, he's landing some hard shots, but the heavy-handed shots are coming from Montiel, and he's not far behind on punches landed. Now, round by round, you could give most of these rounds to Centeno, but it could be very close. Well, right now, I got Montiel, uh, uh, you know, ahead right now in this round. I think he's landed, he's put the pressure on, and he's been effective with the aggressiveness. And that's not good if it is a close fight for uh, Centeno. Like right there, he just got peppered with three, three little choppers right there. Now, as far as the power goes, you look at Centeno's face. He doesn't really have any bruising or marking or or he hasn't been cut. So the guy who really is showing the effects of the punches right now is Montiel. Yeah, yeah his Montiel. Face. I agree with that. You know, he's coming in. He's coming in pretty wild. He's, he's being a headhunter most of the time. He's not really throwing any combinations and using the body punches as well. You know, you can't be just a headhunter, but he's there, there he is throwing a couple combinations, which he should be. Uppercut there by Centeno. Montiel, though, had some success there prior to that. He did. Marching forward, able to land his shot. Centeno has boxed very well. He's had a very motivated man in front of him. Now they're going to fight at close range, and this should be interesting. Centeno has really not allowed this too much, fellas. No, he hasn't, and I, I think he kind of did himself a little disservice not spending a few, you know, portions of each round on the inside to do some damage. You can do a lot of damage when you're in close. 
and, and he's not as wide a puncher as Montiel is. So, you know, he's got to keep his hands up when he is close to him. And I'm talking about Centeno. Hey, you know what, big picture, fellas? This has been a good fight. Great fight. It's a very yeah, good, good fight. fight. Yeah. High level. They both really brought it after each other. They mean it. There's a lot at stake for both of these guys with their careers. Centeno trying to get back toward the top. Well, Centeno's coming yeah. out strong at the end of the round here with 30 seconds left. Trying some good combinations. Ooh. Good hard right hand by Centeno. Montiel oh. says bring it. Well, he is. Now he's got him doubled up a little bit in the corner. Final seconds. Centeno trying to ride it out. There's still 10 seconds. Centeno made a vital error there. You yes, never put did. down your head and show the head to a puncher because a puncher will knock you out. Centeno looks like he's pretty gassed at this point. And the bell rings, and it couldn't be soon enough. Good work by both fighters. Hugo Centeno Jr., active, creative, used his imagination, changed tactics. Montiel was determined the entire fight. Only question is, was he effective enough with scoring shots? Good fight. Looked like Centeno Joe had, had was seeing the finish line and couldn't wait to get there. Yeah, well, Montiel, though, when, when he had Centeno cornered here in, 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 in the white uh, corner here, he, he definitely looked like he hurt Centeno a little bit, but Centeno grabbed on, you know? This is him feeling good after landing some punches. Well, he was looking for something to be excited about. He wasn't able to ever really hurt Centeno except for in the earlier rounds. But he has good thudding power. Again, he has won two straight fights. It's getting stopped in two rounds by Hami Mungia. So he's got a lot to gain here as well. Doesn't want to be in permanent opponent mode. But goes in against Centeno and Centeno was outstanding. All right, so here's how Marcos Villegas had it on his scorecard, and he gave that last round to Montiel, and he has it. Oh, fellas, look. See, it is possible. Well, if, if, Mar draw. if Marcos is right, and I believe he's right that Montiel pulled out that last round by that flurry there because he, he, he looked like he hurt Centeno because Centeno grabbed on. But if, if, if he is right, Boy, Centeno made a mistake it, it, giving it, up that last Sure, round. it just illustrates that Marcos is doing a good job. He's scoring the fight, doing the best that he can, and a reasonable person can have this a draw. Yeah. That's what, you know, even if we feel like Centeno did more of the work here. It'll be interesting as we go to the judges. Dr. Lou Moret, David Sutherland, Tim Cheatham will have the scores when we come back in Ontario, California, and getting closer to Harrison, Charlo, too. This is going to be very interesting. That was a hard-fought battle between Hugo Centeno Jr. and that man Juan Montiel. Montiel more of the plotter doing the stalking. Did he land enough? But he came on strong in those last few rounds. He might have taken a few, guys. Take a look. Let's go back through this fight. Again, early on, you had a man doing the jabbing, being creative. Montiel doing the slugging. But it ended up being pretty close. Lots of scoring shots. Yeah, he is. Uh, Montiel throwing a good left hook. First, it started with the uppercut. Has a... Uh, Montel, a little hurt, a little wavy on his feet. Well, this is the back and forth we saw all night right here. There was uh, Montiel landing that good double hook, and then uh, we got Centeno coming back with the right hand, now a right uppercut. This is why it was a very close fight. It was a tough fight to score. Good body shot and right hook from Montiel. There's where that cut happened right there. You'll see it start bleeding. Bam, right there. Boy, that really started squirting out. And then what happens next, Lennox? Oh, yeah, you see a... Uh... Here's Montella coming up with a good uppercut, good inside work. And here you see his emotion because, you know, he wants to fight. That was the last round that I think Montiel may have taken over the, that round just by that last worry. And I mentioned that CopyBox really was illustrating this fight in that it wasn't wide in terms of the scoring shots for Centeno Jr. Usually if you have a guy doing the jabbing and picking apart, doing the sticking and moving, if he has a wide enough margin, he wins. But that's only 132 to 128. So the heavier shots from Montiel, even though he's a little slower, a little more of a, a plotter, he landed more power punches as well, 117 to 92. And this is just indicative of what the judges have to look at and what they're trying to process. Once again, Marcos Villegas had it a draw, which is instructive that it's possible to score it that way. And tonight's official decision is sponsored by Subway. We have the decision, I believe, ready to go. We go to the ring and Jimmy Lennon Jr. Ladies and gentlemen, after 10 rounds of action, we go to the scorecards. 
Judge of Ringside, Tim Cheatham, scores the bout 97 to 93 in favor of Hugo Centeno Jr. Judge of Ringside, David Sutherland, sees it 96 to 94 in favor of Juan Juanito Montiel. And our judge, Dr. Lou Moret, scores the bout 95 to 95, even a draw. The decision is a split decision draw. Well, it was possible, and it just happened. Montiel did enough to grab enough rounds from the boxer. Interesting. Yeah, I mean, it could have it could have went either way. Both of them uh, won the right amount of uh, rounds, and both looked good. Both were scoring at different times, and um, you know, these type of fights are hard to to, to judge. Yep.